folks, it's JR. Back for another episode of Echoes of Shannon Street Case File. This is going to be episode 30, some yelling inside. Back to negotiations. Don't forget to get a chance, hit the subscribe button. Also, the link down in the description, click on that. If you want to check out the podcast, and the podcast has these same episodes. If you want to buy a copy of the book, copy of the documentary, check out my website, get over on Facebook and look at the uh, book site I've got set up over there, all that stuff. I'm going to do a clip from the documentary, Shannon Street Echoes Under a Blood Red Moon. It's going to be Paulette Sutton. At the time of Shannon Street, she was working UT in Memphis. And today, she is a big time blood spatter expert who travels all over the country, I guess all over the world. She is, she is definitely the expert on blood and blood patterns and blood spatter. We're gonna to listen to that and then we'll get into the negotiations. Remember the back of the door, the back of the front door had a tremendous amount of blood on it. Um, a lot of impacts with what I later found out was Officer Hester's head uh, against that front door. Okay, we will stay away from that then. I was looking at the angle, you know, from religious leaders in the world talking, but yeah, okay, we will stay away from that. Yeah, we don't want to do that then. Now what this is, if you remember from two episodes ago when we were doing negotiations, the negotiator, and I think it's Walter Cruz, he was asking about trying to talk to uh, Lindbergh about world religious leaders and whoever he was talking to, the lieutenant or the captain, whoever it was, somebody nixed that idea and told him to stay away from it. So this is, I believe, Walter Cruz rolling over and exposing his soft underbelly and saying, okay, we won't do that. That's probably not a good analogy, but anyways, let's get back to negotiations. Lindbergh, come on Lindbergh, talk to me. I know you can hear me in there, let's talk. Come on Lindbergh, we can work this thing out together, but we have to talk. Put the telephone back on the hook, all right? I don't want us to talk through this bullhorn, but we can do a lot better by telephone, but you have to talk to me. We can work this thing out together, Lindbergh. You have to help us, but you also have to help us. You can, you can help us, but you can also, but you also have to help us. That doesn't make any sense. I don't know if that's, that should be, have to help you anyways, folks, excuse me. You are the leader. I know you can do that. We are concerned about the people in the house, Lindbergh. Do they need any medical attention? I can't hear you, Lindbergh. You have to speak louder. All right, you have to come closer to the window, Lindbergh. I can't hear you. No, I still can't hear you. Lindbergh, come on close to the window so we can talk. We can work this thing out together. We are not here to harm you. We are here to help you. Come on, Lindbergh. Come over to this side of the house. Let's talk. There is no harm in talking. If you don't want to talk, why don't you send the people who want to come out and let them go. Let them come out on out. Let them come on outside. Come on, Lindbergh, we can work this thing out together, but you have to talk to me. I don't even know what you want. I know you are tired. I know it has been a long night for you. It has been a long night for me. It's been a long night for everybody. We can work this thing out. We can go our own way. Come on, Lindbergh, talk to me. Lindbergh, come on, let's talk. There's no harm in it. Come on, Lindbergh, we can work this thing out together. Lindbergh, come on. Lindbergh, come on, talk to me. Come on, we can work this thing out together. I know you can hear me. Why not come on 
Let's talk about it. Put the telephone back on the hook, Lindbergh. Come on, Lindbergh, talk to me. Lindbergh, come on. If you won't, we will let you talk to George again. You know you trust George. We have got George staying here half the night trying to help you, but you have to help yourself. You have to help those people in the house. We can help you. Come on, Lindbergh. Lindbergh, talk to us. Lindbergh, come on. You can talk to me. Lindbergh, come on, Lindbergh, talk to me. Lindbergh, we can work this thing out together. Lindbergh, if the people don't want to stay inside the house, why don't you let them out? I know your friends there are getting tired, and I know they are hungry, and I know it is cold in there. You don't have to give your friends a... Why don't you give your friends a break? Come on, Lindbergh, talk to me. You have to think about other people inside the house. Lindbergh, come on. Lindbergh, talk to me. Lindbergh, can we work this thing out together, Lindbergh? But you have to talk to me. Lindbergh, come on. There's no harm in talking. We know you can hear us in there. Lindbergh, come on. Think of your friends inside your house. Is it fair to them? Why don't you let them come on out? Their families are worried about them, Lindbergh. They say you are good people and we believe them and we believe we know that you know they are good people, so why don't you let them out? Lindbergh, come on, Lindbergh, talk to me. There's no harm in talking. Lindbergh, come on, let's be a leader. We can work this thing out together, Lindbergh. No one is going to be harmed. No one is going to get hurt. We can work this thing out nice. Lindbergh, you have to put the phone back on the hook so we can talk. I know you can hear us through the bullhorn, and the batteries are down in the radio, and the telephone is the next best thing. So why don't you put the telephone back on the receiver and let's talk man to man. You are a man, and you are a leader, and I respect that, but you know we have got to talk to one another about this. Is there anything you can think of anything we should be touching on. Tape number four, sign number two, page four. We are going off the air for a minute. Tape number five, sign number one, page one. We have been here a long time. I think I have gotten to know you a little bit. You have got to trust me on this. You trust George, and George came down here to try and help you. We are here to help you, not harm you. But you have to talk to us first, Lindbergh. We are concerned about you. Lindbergh, come on and talk to me. Come on, Lindbergh. Think of those people inside your house. Think of your friends. If they don't want to stay, why don't you send them out? Come on, Lindbergh. Be a leader and talk to me. Lindbergh, come on. Let's work this thing out together. Let some of them outside. Lindbergh, come on. Come on and talk to me. You have to talk to us. Come on. We have to work this thing out together. We know you are tired. We know that your friends are tired. We know you are hungry in there. And we know you are cold in there. Lindbergh, come on. Talk to me. We can work this thing out together. Lindbergh. But you have to talk to me. Put the telephone back on the receiver so we can talk and work this thing out together. Come on, Lindbergh. I am trying to help you a lot, and you are a respectable person. Respectable people do respectable things. Put the telephone back on the hook, and let's get this thing resolved. We are here to help you, Lindbergh, not here to harm you. If you need some medical assistance, we can get you some, but you have to tell us that we don't know what is going on. You have to talk to us. Come on, Lindbergh. Lindbergh, Lindbergh, come on. A leader always thinks of his men. Why don't you send them outside, Lindbergh? We have a girl inside. Why don't you send the girl outside as a gesture of good faith? Send someone outside, anyone who needs medical attention. I know you're concerned about them. Come on, Lindbergh. Still no response. Now, obviously, he's mentioning a female in the the house. That was from several episodes ago where they had received intelligence information that 
there was a female in the house. Now, that's not true, but they don't know that. A lot of what they've got, that even though they're receiving information from people in the neighborhood, and by this time they're uh, trying to track down some of the followers that escaped, but any information they receive, they don't know if it's true or not. So it, it's all conjecture. But that's all they've got to work on and with. All right, let's go and continue. Lindbergh, come on. This is Jeff again. All right, this will be Jeff Larkin. You've seen him in some of the um, documentary segments. Talk to me, Lindbergh. We can work this thing out together, but you have to talk to me. Why don't you put the receiver back on the phone? Let's work this out like man to man, all right? There's no harm in that. We are here to help you, not harm you. We can work this thing out together, Lindbergh, but you have to help yourself and help your people inside there. Come on, Lindbergh. Come on over to this side of the house and let's talk. If you don't want to pick up the telephone, come on over to the side of the house. That is not asking a whole lot. We're here to help you. We are not here to harm you. Listen, there's nothing we we can't work out. It is not as bad as you think. We are here to help you, not harm you. We are concerned that all inside the house, we know you're concerned about them. I know you, they are your friends. I know your friends want to go home, like to go home for a good breakfast. They would like to go home to their families. They would like to go home with their brothers and sisters and be with them. Think about it. You know there is nothing that we can't work out, but you have to talk to me about it, Lindbergh. Lindbergh, I don't even know what you want. You have to talk to me. If you won't talk to me, why don't you let one of your friends talk to me? Surely they can speak in your behalf. Lindbergh... I couldn't hear you. You are too far off in the distance. Come on up closer to the window. I still can't hear you, Lindbergh. Your voice is very muffled. Come on and talk to me. Come on, we can work this thing out together, but you have to talk to me a little bit. Come on over to the side of the window. Lindbergh, if you don't want to talk to me, why don't you send someone else outside or those who want to go, let them go. I know you're cold in there. I know you're hungry. I know you and your friends in there would like to see your relatives. They are very concerned about you. Tape number five, side number one, page two. But you have to talk to me, Lindbergh. Lindbergh, I still can't hear you. You've got to come closer to the window. Come on, Lindbergh. Lindbergh, come on and talk to me. We can work this thing out together. I promise you, you, I'm sorry, I promise you we can work this thing out. We are here to help you. We are not here to harm you. You have to understand that. We are negotiators. We don't harm anyone. We are here to help you. We are trying to understand what the problems are. You have to talk to us, Lindbergh. Lindbergh, I still can't hear you. CP, we are hearing some yelling inside the house, but we can't make anything out. We hear them responding back there, but they are not talking a whole lot. I mean, they are in the middle of the house, and they are responding to what I am saying right now. Lindbergh, if you can't hear me, I mean, I can't hear you. Why don't you put the phone up so we can talk? There's no harm in that. Look, we can work this thing out together. We are concerned about you. We are concerned about your friends in there with you. I know they are concerned. Your relatives are worried about them. They want them to come home. We are concerned, and we are concerned about your friends. We can work this thing out together, Lindbergh. Come on, put the phone up on the hook and let's talk man to man. Let's work this thing out. 
You have to talk to me, Lindbergh. I am not a mind reader. I don't understand what the problem is. We can work with you on those problems and we can resolve them. We can help you and we can help anyone inside the house, but you have to talk to me, Lindbergh. Lindbergh, come on closer to the window so I can talk to you. At least get a little closer to the window so I can hear you. I can't hear you back in there. You are muffled. Come on, Lindbergh, talk to me. Look, we can work this thing out together, Lindbergh. There's nothing we can't work out. We can do it together, Lindbergh. Come on, put the phone back on the hook, Lindbergh. Look, if you don't want to put the phone back on the hook, why don't you send someone outside so we can talk to us, so we can get a better understanding of the problem. Come on, Lindbergh. If someone needs some medical attention in there, why don't you go ahead and send them out? Come on, Lindbergh. Let's work this thing out together. Let's talk man to man. Let's talk up front. We can work this thing out together. If you won't talk to me, why don't you have someone else talk to me? I am sure you trust the other people in there. I told you we are concerned about you and we are concerned about them and their relatives are concerned about them. If someone needs medical attention in there, we can provide it. I know you are a good Christian and you are a good human being. I'm sure you want to make sure anyone who needs medical attention will get it. So why don't you send those people outside the house? If you don't want to talk to me, have one of your friends talk to me. We know you're hungry in there, and we want you to know of you and your friends in there, we are all concerned. But you have to help yourself, and you have to talk with us. And you know we can work this thing out together, Lindbergh. But you have to talk to me. Come on, Lindbergh. Come on over to the side of the house. I still can't hear you. I don't know where you are, but you are somewhere close. I can't hear you real good. We can work this thing out together. Lindbergh, come on. Lindbergh. Come on, Lindbergh. We haven't talked in the last several hours. We can't work it. We can't work out. It is not as bad as you think it is. You know that, and your friends know that we can work this thing out together, Lindbergh. Lindbergh, come on. Lindbergh, come and talk to me. Come on over by the window and talk to me. There's no harm in talking. Listen, we... If you don't want to talk. Now that window, in case you've forgotten, the window that uh, Jeff Larkin wants Sanders to come to is the northeast bedroom. The window's on the north side and, and on the east side both are are broken out or have been shot out. So that's that's where he wants him to come to. Near as they can figure, they think Lindbergh and his followers are somewhere in the den area where they saw the fire earlier. Okay, folks, that's going to do it for this episode here. Something I wanted to point out, if you notice, they're not, the negotiators are not asking about Bobby Hester. They're not mentioning him at all. You notice when they say, you know, let your friends come out and surrender or give up, well, they're doing that intentionally because they have figured out that every time they bring up uh, Bobby Hester's name, Lindbergh or his followers would beat Hester. So they're intentionally staying away from any mention of the police officer. You notice they're not asking how he's doing or anything. If you'll remember from the earlier negotiations, they would ask about Hester, or want to talk to Hester, and then Lindbergh would key up the mic and Hester would be beaten. So that is intentional. They hadn't forgot about him. Not, not that it matters now in, in regards to Bobby Hester, but it's a little late for him. But that's why they're not mentioning Officer Hester's name. Folks, I do appreciate y'all. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, 
We'll see you down the road.